in order to do a good cleaning of the toilet before I work on it, I'm going to go ahead and bring in one of the wands for cleaning. And you'll at least know too how to take out this screen in this back window. It's got little uh, springs on this one side, not on the, or excuse me, on this side, not on the other. So you want to push it towards the spring and then bring it out. Here's those springs. And it goes back the same way. Those go back in the groove and this pushes back in there. Now I've got enough space here where I can put, bring my hose and my hose nozzle, my uh, snorkel in to do a cleaning of the toilet before I take it off. Okay, we're going to change the seal on the clapper valve today on the toilet. So I brought in a washing wand and I'm going to go ahead and um, empty the black water tank and clean as much of this toilet on the inside as I can as well as use it to uh, help clean the black water tank. Alright, in order to keep from getting all splashed and uh, um, water f flying up and everything, I've uh, found that using a, a towel and my foot on the flusher that I'm able to keep the splash coming up uh, down to a very minimum and it, clean the toilet more efficiently. So I've got that just sitting there and the clapper has actually got pressure against it and I'm going to turn this on. Okay. Now raise it up so it's cleaning the inside of the toilet throw and then down and up and that's going to make it a little bit easier to work on when I take this toilet off of there. Plus I'm going to use this one to help clean the tank. Okay. All right. In order to uh, change the, the uh, seal in the flapper valve on this, we're going to have to remove the toilet. And that starts by removing these little caps that cover up the studs that and the bolts. And they just come right off. Or if you can't get it off, you can use a screwdriver to pry it off. Then you take the half inch wrench and you loosen that bolt and then they, normally you can best back them up with your fingers all the way up and remove it like that. Once you've uh, shut your water off at the source so you don't have any water coming into your cabin come in here and bleed the pressure off like this so you won't once you unhook the water supply to the toilet you won't get a water a lot of water leaking all over and you could just leave that on okay follow me in here all right before we remove the toilet we've got to take the water supply off and I usually a little have a rag here and I catch a little bit of the drip like I say, I've relieved the pressure from the cabin, so we shouldn't have much water at all come through there. So here's the, the water supply, and these are usually just finger tight. A lot of times, if you can't get them real tight with your hand, you can uh, just tighten them, well, maybe a quarter turn after they're on there. And uh, then to always check and make sure there's no leaks. Okay, there's the, the toilet's unhooked. And we do have a little residual water from in there, but we can mop that up and there won't be an issue with water coming out of the toilet itself. Okay, in order, in order to get the toilet out, we're going to have to remove the one on the other side too, but it's not good to film on that side. There's no room. So I'm going to pull this toilet and I'm going to take it out into the bed of my truck. And um, I ordered this Stepford kit online and it came from Amazon in like two days so this is your new flapper seal for the flusher and this is your new mounting seal for the wood for the floor to the toilet base seal and it's always a good idea to replace that too it comes in a little plastic bag with those two pieces and if your toilet can accept new washers down here go ahead and put them on they don't they don't go on the toilet that I have and they do have instructions. If this video isn't enough, you get a set of nice instructions with it in three different languages. So the toilet's made pretty well 
this model of Thetford. I think it's called the Style 2, Style or, oh, Style 2. And I like it a lot because it's porcelain on top, plastic on the bottom. Here's how we, we remove one side from the other, the top from the base. You loosen these nuts up. And they don't come out so early because easy because they're into plastic. And plastic has a way of just kind of keep grabbing it, grabbing onto it. I'll speed this part up. You can shut it off. Okay, once you got all of the screws out of there, this bowl's kind of set up in a kind of just a twist situation. We're going to have to take a pair of pliers. Okay, we're going to separate the bowl from the base. In order to do that and have it be comfortable, we're going to pinch this wire clamp, wire hose clamp, move it back a ways. And then we're going to remove that hose and it's on a barb type fitting so it takes a little bit of pressure you're going to lose a little bit of water just what's up here in the in the valve now if you can see inside there's these ears that catch the porcelain here so in order to remove that you just hold the base and give it a twist then it comes right off All right, I use uh, the uh, I use the nitro gloves because, geez, you just don't want to handle everything like this. So here's our culprit right here, and it's not so much that it's we can see that it's bad; it's just it's become very, very, very soft and sticky, and so this valve here won't slide back and forth real easy on it. So it's best to put a new one in because they kind of kind of come pre-lubed and they'll take a it'll, it'll work a lot better this is your your valve here and if you push down on the toilet you can see it opens and closes well this is getting kind of cruddy all the way around here so I'm going to clean it up real good and I'm going to clean this surface real good too because that's what slides across here and creates a good seal to keep water in your toilet we're going to remove the flapper retainer ring, which will open up a lot of uh, ick and muck inside there. This ring needs to be cleaned off, and we can hose all this out too. This beveled surface right here is where your um, clapper valve slides across, so it's got to be clean. I had a couple of deposit areas in there that was slowing down the efficiency of it. There's a little bit left right here. I'm going to clean that up and then uh, we're going to use my Uncle Jerry's toothbrush. I don't think he'll care, do you? To clean up this as good as possible and make sure that the surface is smooth and there's nothing that it can grab and slow down the performance. Okay, once I got that I'll rinse it all off. I'll check the o-ring make sure it's not broken all the way around look for cracks or nicks or breaks in that o-ring and that's fine then as bad as it seems we're going to try and get as much as possible off of this gate valve or flapper valve whatever you want to call it anything that can affect performance and I think the best bet is kind of let it soak there for a while, get some water on it, and then blast it off. Every once in a while, 
test stamp, make sure it's working. You know, once you hold that down, you can see a lot more damage or a lot more crud down in there. I know it sounds like a dirty job, but it's better than having a toilet that doesn't work. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. It looks like a little bit of more water in there. Check that works okay. Seems to be fine. I'll take this back over and we'll start our reassembly. Once you're satisfied with the cleanliness, uh, you, then you need to change the toilet base to flooring gasket and it just pulls right off of there and you just put a brand new one on there and that's pretty simple and it's a uh, new one fits kind of tighter you want to make sure it's down real good and it's beveled so it'll go right into the receiver in the floor and so you want to make sure that bevel is sticking up Okay, once we've we've got it tipped back up, we'll put this ring back in there. Like I say, check the O-ring, make sure it's good. Put it back in there. Make sure it's down all the way around. Check the performance. Make sure you're satisfied that that's going to work when you get it back together. Once you got this clean and you've got your uh, your collar back on there, covering your valve. And you just set your new gasket right there on top and it just kind of sits there. What holds it in is the weight and the screws from putting the porcelain back on. So we're going to take this, set it on there right now in a position, turn it so we can see where we're at and we're going to look at these tabs here. Make sure that they come up through there, like that. Once we can see these tabs, you grab your toilet and give it a twist, and that locks in, just like that. It's very simple. And then we, from here, we reassemble. We put our washer back on and start that screw back in there, just like that. As you're tightening those up, they don't have to be very tight. Uh, you're, you're putting your screws into plastic and they don't hold a lot of torque. So, and it's it's a nice tie it fit anyway. After you got that in there and you want to rehook up your water supply, force that on the barb opening. Take your pliers, pinch that clamp, kind of get it back on the same spot if you can because it's going to have wear rings. Give it a little test, make sure it stays there. Make sure this thing is hasn't come undone. Have a look at it. And then we're going to check the performance. Okay, after you've checked performance and you're happy with that, that your valve works good, it's time to reset the toilet. Now that tapered gasket is it's still in position because it's kind of nice. It just stays right there. And this is becomes a little bit challenging to hit those bolts. But if you've got patience, 
I see the, I see the bolt. There, it there goes one, and there's the other one. You want to make sure that both of those bolts are sticking up through the mounting. And the, the toilet itself will be real rocky at that point. Go ahead and hook up the water supply in back. Because it's easier to do this now than later. And remember, that's a finger tight situation. And then if you're not real strong, just an eighth or quarter of a turn with a plier. This toilet has these pedestals here that keep you from tight, if keep it from splitting. Uh, a lot of times there'll be a big washer, but you can see a big washer on top of that, uh, that little mound here would really serve no purpose. So I've got this one on. And I'm not, you can't see, but I'm on the other side, putting the nut on. I've got the nut on both sides, and I'm just going to lift this toilet just a little bit to make sure that seal is down. Now, the, the trick of this is to, to take it so the toilet frame, the base, is in contact with the floor and that big big seal you put on the bottom is keeping it from doing that but you got to do it anyway you got to take it all the way down to the floor otherwise it would rock around on you so i'm going to tighten this one about three turns and i'm going to go over to this side and take it down equally far. So I don't want to go get it in there solid and have it be tipped. Coming back to this side. That one's getting some resistance, uh, some decent resistance, so it's getting close to being all the way down. Okay, this one's getting tight. Don't tighten these too tight. It'll only be and snug. That one's good. I'm going to come to the other side, finish it up, get it snug where I like it. Check the toilet. Oh, it's nice and solid. So we're good. Check it one more time. Both sides. And you're done. Just have to put these little screw or bolt covers on there. You could glue them down if you want, but these seem to stick without gluing them. I'm installing the one on the other side. The water supply is hooked up. So I'm going to run out and put the uh, turn the water back on and we'll check it for leaks and performance. There we go. I'm not watching what I'm doing, so you can see better than I can. Anyway, this one doesn't want to stay for what reason. It might screw on there. There we go. I'm going to check this hand tightness one more time. I'm going to clean up any water that may have leaked out of the supply so when I test this I'm not seeing old water. Okay, I have the water turned back on. 
I'm checking it for any sort of wetness down here. Anything that might be dripping. Appears to be good. Check our hose connection. Appears to be dry.